Hey, Bib. Hey, Bib. I have a question. Yes. What's a gray water septic? How's it work? Why would you even use it? And is it legal? That's not a question, but it's good <laughs> questions. And that is what we're going to talk about today. A traditional septic system is a way for a house or business to get rid of all its wastewater if it's not connected to city sewage. All of that wastewater is sent to a buried waterproof tank that's large enough for the solids to settle at the bottom. The remaining liquids exit the tank into a leach or drain field via a perforated pipe which then uses the soil as a natural filter to remove harmful bacteria. There are plenty of rules and regulations and codes all centered around traditional septic systems. And for good reason, if you don't do it right, there's a good chance you're going to overload your soil, inject harmful bacteria into it, cause backups or tainted areas on the property. Super gross. On the other side of that, septic tanks that are installed correctly are actually pretty good for the environment. They take the water that you do use and gently filter it back into the ground and replenish the water table. Now the difference between a traditional septic and a gray water septic is that a gray water septic only deals with gray water. Yeah. But what does that even mean? What's the difference? Okay, let's look at this. Gray water is the wastewater that comes from bathroom sinks, washing machines, bathtubs, and showers. It should contain very low levels of contamination and be easy to filter and discharge. Black water is the wastewater from toilets that contain fecal matter. In some states or countries, your kitchen sink and dishwasher are also considered black water because of the food particles and grease that come from them. So when we talk about a gray water septic, what we mean is only water that's coming out of your bathroom sink, your shower, maybe a washing machine, and you should be using biodegradable soaps. So why do you even need a gray water septic? Well, in most cases, if you're using biodegradable soaps and cleaners, you really should be reusing your gray water, especially when you live in the desert climate like we do. You could use it for irrigation or watering your gardens. But there are some situations where you may want to infiltrate that gray water into the ground as quickly as possible. So let's take a look at a few reasons why. Number one, it can actually really smell. Yeah, sending all of that gray water to an open air basin can really permeate your entire area with that very unpleasant gray water smell. Number two, it can actually contain harmful bacteria. Yeah, unless you completely enclose that basin, any animals you have, dogs, cats, goats, sheep, whatever, they're going to be drawn to it. And if they drink it, then they're going to get sick and get a bacterial infection. And trust me, you don't want that. Number three, maybe you have nowhere for it to go. Yeah, maybe you don't have a place to create a basin or trees to plant. And so it would just make more sense for you to send that water directly in. Now, let's be clear, as long as you can reuse your gray water safely, go ahead and do that first. It's better for the environment. Yes, but if you find yourself in a situation where you need to send that gray water directly into the ground as quickly as possible, then this gray water septic plan is for you. So, is this gray water septic system even legal? Well, obviously, we are not the permit police. We do not know what everyone's permit situation is going to be in their local county. What we can tell you is that gray water reuse is actually pretty actively encouraged across the United States, at least. And we know that if you're installing a true gray water system, there shouldn't be that many hoops you have to jump through. It's when you start adding that black water element is when a lot of the codes and the requirements and the permits all start to come into play. Of course, check with your own local governments to make sure you're installing the right thing. Let's talk about how this gray water septic system actually works. Yeah, so we've taken a few sources of inspiration. We've pieced this idea together. It's similar to a traditional septic, but it should be much smaller and easier to install. Because there's no large solids or grease that need to settle in the bottom of the tank, we can send that gray water down into the ground as quickly as possible. The trick is to make sure you never oversaturate the ground and cause it to seep up on the surface. 
We'll be using drainage gravel and plastic barrels with holes to allow quick drainage as well as overflow tanks and a leach line. Today we'll be walking you through how to build this gray water septic system. It's sized for our renovated 1972 vintage Airstream that is permanently parked on our off-grid homestead. It has a 40 gallon gray tank and we as a family of six do not use more than 75 gallons a day. Is there a rule for sizing a gray water septic system? Not really that we could find. Most of the regulations are around black water septics and that's because in the US most households use 60 gallons of water per person per day. So you're talking about a lot more water and then you add in the toilet, the sewage, the grease from the foods and you've got a whole different system that you got to work with. Since we're using so little water and because there are no solids involved, our system will include two 55 gallon barrels and a 10 foot leach line. This will allow us to completely flush our full 40 gallon gray tank into the first barrel. The second barrel is used as a backup if somehow another 40 gallons needed to come right after. The 10 foot leach line is also extra insurance in case both were to ever fill up and the water needs somewhere to go. Now that you've got the idea, let's go ahead and grab our materials and show you how to build it step by step. Thankfully, this is a very simple system. Here's what you'll need. Two 55 gallon plastic barrels, 10 to 20 feet of three inch schedule 40 PVC, one 90 degree three inch schedule 40 PVC fitting, two three inch schedule 40 couplers, one three inch threaded fitting and screw cap, two feet of four inch schedule 40 PVC, one four inch schedule 40 coupler, a footloose sewer cap, four tons of drainage gravel, 30 square feet of vapor barrier vinyl, and one tube of waterproof sealant. Step one, we need to dig the hole for the system. Easy first step, I like yeah. it. Keep it at least 20 feet away from your source. You need to know where that water's coming from and where it's going. Also, you wanna to try to use your natural elevation drop. So your source should be higher than where the septic is actually gonna be and then the leach line should be a little bit lower than that. Now, if your property does not have the proper slope, you can create it by just going one quarter inch per foot in the right direction. Lots of extra digging, but you gotta do what you gotta do. You're gonna to wanna to start with a hole that's seven feet by four feet by five feet deep, high, it's a little confusing. You want it to go down five feet. And the reason for this is you want to have enough room for drainage. And then the seven by four is so you have about a foot on each side of those barrels for additional gravel. Step two, dig your trenches for the pipe connecting from the source to the septic and then from the septic out to the leach line. These don't have to be super deep, but for the leach line, we recommend digging down at least two feet so you have room for the pipe and gravel below grade. Step three, now that the site is prepped, start bringing in your drainage gravel. This is usually different than regular gravel. Check with your local rock yard and see what they recommend. Bigger rocks mean more opportunity for the water to infiltrate quickly. Fill the bottom of the main hole with two foot of drainage gravel. Step four, take your two 55 gallon barrels, flip them upside down and drill at least 12 one inch holes in the bottom. We used a cross pattern to space them evenly. Step five, since we're gonna connect the barrels with three inch schedule 40 PVC, get a 3.5 inch hole saw and cut out holes across from each other on each barrel. Keep in mind that each hole should be sequentially a little bit lower as you go from the source to the leach line. Step six, now set the barrels in the main hole on top of the gravel, letting those large three and a half inch holes face each other and line up with the source and leach line. At this point, you can test fit the pipe to make sure everything is going to work. You may find you need to adjust the depth of your trenches during this stage. Step seven, with the barrels exactly where you want them, fill the rest of the hole with drainage gravel all around the barrels, stopping right below the holes for the PVC connections. You can either tape off the holes so no rocks get inside while you fill the hole, or you can leave the PVC pipes temporarily inserted. Step eight, add about one foot of drainage gravel to the leach field trench there should still be enough room for the PVC to sit on top of this gravel. Step nine, take your 10 foot PVC leach line and drill some one inch holes into the bottom of the pipe. Add a cap to the far end to force the water down the perforated holes. Step 10, if you haven't already, slide those three inch pipes into all the holes on the sides of the barrels a few inches and get them exactly where you want them. Step 11, clean off the tops of the barrels and put down a vapor barrier covering all the gravel in the main pit. Cut around the barrels so that it fits right against the edges. 
Step 12. The vapor barrier for the leech line actually goes above the perforated PVC pipe. Step 13. Now it's time to install your cleanouts and finish up. Now we did two types of cleanouts, but really you can do this however you want. The idea is just to make sure that you have a way to access both of the barrels in case they ever need to be pumped or cleaned in the future. So this is the easiest way that we found to do this. You want to take two to three inches of pipe and then glue a coupler onto it. Then drill a hole onto the top of your tank that is the size of the pipe and not the coupler. That way when you slide that pipe down into the hole, the coupler will keep it from falling down into the tank. At this point, you can go ahead and measure from that coupler up to your ground level, cut your pipe, and go ahead and install that. For one barrel, we did a 3-inch pipe with a threaded coupler and a threaded plug cap. And on the other barrel, we did a 4-inch pipe with a footloose sewer cap for easy access to pour liquids directly into the septic with one hand. Step 14. Now that you have everything in place, it's time to seal all your connections. Run a bead of waterproof caulking all around the places where the pipe enters the 55 gallon barrels. All right, one more time before we cover it all back up. We've got this pipe that will connect to the sewer out on the Airstream. Gray water only. It's gonna come down here into the barrel. The barrel has holes in the bottom of it so that that will drain out and then there's gravel underneath which it will drain into. If this one happens to fill up too quickly there's an overflow and then if that one fills up too quickly there's a leach line that runs 10 feet out that way and that pipe also has gravel under it and holes in the bottom of the pipe. And then we've got the two clean outs coming up out of the top. And then we've got the plastic over the gravel. So, we're going to let this caulking cure a little bit better, and then we're going to start covering this thing back up. Step 15. Once the caulking has set and dried, begin to backfill the trenches and the hole with your remaining dirt back to ground level. Compact as you go and watch the vertical plumb of the cleanouts. We definitely recommend putting rocks or a barrier around the cleanouts to protect them and make it visually obvious that there's something there. When you're ready, make your source connections and run some tests. Use the cleanouts to visually inspect what's happening while the gray water comes in. Here, stop. Is pretty much it. Now you have a system that will naturally filter your water into the ground in a safe and not as stinky way. If you need a permanent copy of these plans and steps, we have a PDF guide available for purchase. Otherwise, feel free to reference this video or the article on our site as you build your own. Happy gray watering and we'll see you next time.